Here's a quick way to divide monomials. It's all about simplifying fractions and subtracting exponents. Now don't let the word monomial confuse you. A monomial is an algebraic term. You can have numbers and variables, but it's just one term like what you see here. There's no addition or subtraction in between any of these numbers or variables. So we have a monomial at the top and a monomial at the bottom. Now I mentioned simplifying fractions. Three over five will not simplify. Subtracting exponents. Let's look at the a's. Where do we have more a's at? This is a to the fourth. This is a to the understood first. Whenever you don't see an exponent with a variable, it's an understood one. Therefore, we have more a's at the top. As a matter of fact, we have three additional a's at the top because four minus this understood one is three. So we're left with a cubed. Now, where is this a cubed at in the answer? It is in the numerator because you had more a's at the top than you did at the bottom. Let's look at our b's. We have b to the first, b to the third, three minus one, we have b squared, b to the second, but notice it is at the bottom because we had more b's at the bottom. Now what about our c's? Seven minus five, we have c to the second at the bottom because we had more c's at the bottom than we did at the top. Here's an additional example. Pause the video, try it out. Now you may have noticed these variables appeared out of order. Well, really there's no such thing as a correct order with monomials. Sure, alphabetical is preferred, but that's not required. But before we look at the variables, let's simplify. 32 over 48. You can divide these by two, four, eight, or you can even do 16. Let's go ahead and do 16 since that's the greatest common factor. 32 divided by 16 is two. 48 divided by 16 is three. Now had you divided by two, four, or eight, you would have to do additional simplification steps to get to two thirds. Now again, order does not matter. Let's start with our z's. We have z to the eight at the top, z to the fourth at the bottom. If we subtract exponents, eight minus four gives us four. Notice we have z to the fourth power, and that is in the numerator because we had more z's up top. Let's look at our w's. w to the first, w squared, two minus one gives us this w to the understood first at the bottom because we had more w's at the bottom. Now we have a x squared, x to the ninth, nine minus two, we have x to the seventh power. We had this at the bottom because we had more x's at the bottom. And then finally our y's, y to the sixth, y to the fourth, we have two additional y's at the top, which is why you have a y squared in the numerator of your answer. And here's an additional example too. And if you would like even more examples, I recommend checking out the video in the top right corner. But let's finish up with this one. 36 over nine, we can divide both of these by nine. Now 36 divided by nine is four. We'll notice 36 divided by nine is four. Nine divided by nine is an understood one. No need to write that down. Let's look at our d's. d to the fifth, d to the first. Five minus one gives us four in our numerator since we had more d's at the top here. g, well look, we don't have any g's at the bottom, so we still need a g in our answer. m to the first, m squared, two minus one, we have m to the first at the bottom since there were more m's at the bottom here. n cubed, n to the fifth, five minus three is two. So n squared, we had more n's at the bottom, which is why you see that here. And then finally, p cubed, and look right here, p cubed. These cancel out. Essentially, three minus three does give us p to the zero, but did you know that anything to the zero power is one? So if we were to say times one or times one, that doesn't change anything. Multiplying by one does not change anything which is why we can just say, hey, the p cubes cancel out. Now here's a more detailed explanation of why subtracting exponents and simplifying fractions works. Now let's take this step by step. 36, nine times four. And notice the nine is canceled out because there is a nine also at the bottom. And you can always cancel things out as long as your things are getting multiplied. So when the nines cancel, all we have left is that four in the numerator. Now, d to the fifth, that is d times d times d times d times d. 
Let's look at the bottom. We have a single D at the bottom, which I have right there. And notice I'm canceling out one of the D's at the top with one of the D's at the bottom, which is why we have D to the fourth, as you can see over here. Now this G is going to stay in the numerator because there are no more G's in the denominator. And you may have saw a note a moment ago. Make sure to look at the denominator as well in some examples because there may be a variable down here that does not show up in the numerator. Just be mindful of that. Now let's look at our M's. We have a single M in the numerator. M squared, that's M times M in the denominator. We cancel out one at the top and bottom, leaving us with the M in our denominator. N cubed, N to the fifth. N times N times N is N cubed. And then we have N to the fifth down here. Notice we are canceling out three, both in the numerator and denominator, leaving us with N squared in our denominator. And then finally the P cubed, that's P times P times P. They all cancel out with the P cubed at the bottom, as I mentioned a moment ago. And this is the more drawn out approach. But again, it's all about simplifying fractions and subtracting exponents. And again, if you want to see more examples, check out the video in the top right hand corner. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.